The 10th chapter of John's Gospel records Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. And then toward the end of John's Gospel, in his last conversation with Simon Peter, Jesus asked Peter three times, Simon Barjona, Simon son of John, do you love me? And every time Peter said, yes, Lord, yes, you know I love you. Jesus then said to Peter, as if passing his crozier to him, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, tend the flock. And then he said, follow me. I am the good shepherd. That old hymn of the church says, the king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. I don't know about you. I have to speak for myself. But I don't know a thing about sheep. <laughs> and I know even less about shepherds. <laughs> I've never actually met a shepherd of literal sheep. I don't know any personally. I've seen sheep. <laughs> I've eaten sheep. <laughs> And I like sheep, <laughs> but I don't know a thing about them. And I've never met a real, literal shepherd. I, I don't know about you. My, my maternal folk are from rural North Carolina. My paternal folk are from rural Alabama. But I grew up in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> And there's not a pig or a sheep anywhere in <laughs> Buffalo, New York. I don't know a thing about sheep or shepherds. I've never actually met a professional shepherd, AFL, CIO. I've never met any. I don't know what they do. I don't know what the job description really is. I don't know what the personality characteristics are for them. I don't know a thing about shepherds. I just know Jesus says I am the good shepherd. I know Psalm 23 says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't know a thing about shepherds. But I've known one. I've known one. And I've got a feeling most of y'all don't know much about shepherds either. But I'm willing to bet you came here today because you've known one. We, we've known a shepherd. A shepherd who loved Jesus and dared to follow him and follow in his footsteps until, like Jesus, he became a good shepherd among us. I don't know a thing about shepherds. <laughs> but I've known one, and I think you have too. He, he, he was a shepherd that actually cared. John 10, Jesus says that the shepherd cares for his sheep and, 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 and cares for them even to the point of being willing to sacrifice him or herself for the well-being and the welfare of the flock. That's what shepherds do. Folk who are just hired on don't sacrifice themselves for the flock. But a shepherd does, and Ruth and his family, you all know the sacrifices that our brother made and that you made. 
That's what shepherds do. We see the shepherd. Don't know the job description, but we see one. But, but more than that, more than that, shepherds actually care about the flock. Oh, 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 Bishop Gates, I still don't know that song you were talking about, brother, but whatever it was, I, I gotta look it up. <laughs> But he caught our brother's spirit. It was a spirit this man really cared about, folk. And it wasn't just syrupy care. It wasn't just bargain basement compassion. He actually cared. No. He actually loved. He, he, he loved us. I'm, I'm here to tell you, I've been a bishop. He and I were just about the same time. Um, and we've been bishops a while, and I'm here to tell you, he loved us. Why do you think all these bishops showed up today? <laughs> he loved them, and they knew it. It didn't matter who they were, what their politics happened to be, what their theology was, he loved them. This brother was an equal opportunity lover. <laughs> yeah, he was. Qualify that now, now, Ruth. I mean that in a Christian sense. I want to be clear. <laughs> oh, he, he, we, 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 I don't know the top description of a shepherd, but I've seen a shepherd. I've met one. Because the truth is, shepherds take care of the sheep. And when the sheep is hurt, the shepherd cares for them. You, you know that. A shepherd is a balm in Gilead. A source of healing. A source of bringing the healing power of God to bear. Like that old spiritual says, sometimes I feel discouraged. Faith, my life's in vain, but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead. There was a balm in New Jersey. He healed folk. Show you the way that Jesus would have you to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't know the job description. <laughs> but we've seen a shepherd. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is, and I'm going to sit down because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit down, but shepherds also are courageous. And sometimes you may miss that. It may not be obvious, but, but, but the shepherd must defend the flock. Bishops know, defend the flock, defend the faith. We've taken vows. This brother defended the flock, defended the faith. I remember one time when the House of Bishops was in the executive session. And so I will not tell you the content of what we were talking about. <laughs> I'll keep you in wonder. <laughs> but we were in one of those sessions when it really was tough, and we were agonizing over what to do. And I will never forget George Council standing up with that voice of his, trembling, but speaking anyway. Trembling and speaking the truth to us bishops on behalf of the flock of Christ. That's courage. This was a courageous man. But not only was he courageous, he was comedian. <laughs> In addition to that lovely song that Bishop Gates was so gracious enough to share with us, <laughs> I remember being here some years ago, I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was a while back at a, at a convention, and, and I remember Bishop Romero was there, and we were, uh, uh, George asked, would you like to do something fun? And I'm thinking, now what does George mean by fun? What are we talking about? What, what? And he said, we have some sombreros. <laughs> And you, Bishop Romero, and I are going to be the three amigos. 
and we got up and danced or something. Uh, it was tragic. <laughs> it was pathetic. <laughs> and it was so much fun. This was someone who knew how to enjoy life such as it was, come what may. And he helped you laugh again, to rejoice again, to give God thanks and praise again. And in the end, and in the end, he was a lover. He loved Jesus Christ and was not ashamed of him. I heard him preach one of the finest sermons on evangelism that I have ever heard from anybody, Billy Graham included. <laughs> I mean, one of the finest. It was at that diocesan convention, and I didn't know I had never heard George preach. That brother could tell the story. <laughs> I mean, his voice swelled with joy talking about what Jesus means and what following him means, not in a way that excludes anybody, but in a way that reflects the outstretched arms of Jesus, welcoming, come unto me, all ye who are weary, and I'll give you rest. And we saw in this remarkable shepherd something of the love of God. He loved us. He loved Jesus. He loved his family. He loved you, New Jersey. And I'm mindful that his love for us is a reflection of the love he knew in God. I got a feeling that I, I kind of wish I could see George and St. Paul right now. Oh, I bet that's a conversation to behold. Because <laughs> I have a feeling he's reveling in, in St. Paul, for I am persuaded. He knows what St. Paul was talking about. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, not angels nor principalities, not things present, not things to come, not height, not death, not anything else in all of God's grand and glorious creation. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And now, that love that he showed us envelops him and lifts him up and carries him home.